Hello and welcome to Agrestal Vestige, where we are vested in all things Agrestal. My name is Tom and I'm here again with you this week with another blended Scotch whiskey review. This week we have Cutty Sark. Cutty Sark, I'm sure you've seen it almost everywhere you go, no matter what country you're in. Cutty Sark is quite a, quite a popular blended Scotch whiskey, and the the common version of Cutty Sark, of which there there are many Cutty Sarks, but the most common one is blended. It's uh, bottled at uh, forty percent alcohol by volume, and uh, we're going to give this a bit of a smell and a taste and a rating as I've said in previous reviews always be on the lookout for green bottles green ones are the ones you want to see because the whiskey inside is typically of a better quality because it hasn't been colored by caramel E150 or if it has not drastically so and as you can see as you pour the dram of uh, Cutty Sark look how clear that is that's very little added caramel coloring if any at all and that's what you want to see for some reason the average consumer thinks that a, an amber, deep, dark, browny color uh, is in direct proportion to the, the richness of the whiskey, and that's just not true. And so these distilleries and bottlers color the whiskey to give it that consistent color that's appealing psychologically to the average consumer. Whereas, if you see whiskey bottled in dark bottles or green bottles, they don't do that because sitting on the shelf, you can't really tell what the color is. And that's the whole point. Now, if this was a clear bottle sitting on the shelf, looking like this, it probably wouldn't sell as much. You always get a better whiskey when it's not colored. And when it's not chill filtered, obviously. Cuddy Sark does a decent job of their blended Scotch whiskey. Uh, one of the main malts in Cuddy Sark is Glen Rothes. And that's a very old and unique distillery. And if you ever get a chance to sample some of their single malt, I highly encourage you to do so. So what do we have here on the nose? Well, immediately you get the uh, the malt. A bit of apple, like a sweet, red, delicious, sweet apple. The typical honey. Almost like a, also like a vanilla cake frosting. A hint of spice, not too much, just a hint. A bit of citrus, the actual juice, not the peel. Hmm. A bit of dandelion too. It's quite pleasant on the nose and it's quite, uh, complex for a, for a fairly reasonably priced uh, blended uh, scotch whiskey. So what do we have on the palate? Sweet, malty, 
<clears throat> syrupy like a like the a fruit cocktail -y type syrup uh, crisp apples crisp uh, honey vanilla but it's kind of in the background but it's present light citrus uh, the cake frosting too Remember from like a vanilla cake frosting to like a buttercream frosting. Um, there's a wee in the very back. There's a faint, a faintness of char that you do pick up on. Um, there is a, a peppery aspect to it, like a fresh ground black pepper. Um, you have the oak, you have, uh, let's see, you get the arrival of like a, that, um, uh, that peppery note. Uh, along with the, uh, there, there's a cinnamon to it as well, like black pepper and cinnamon. And the finish, it's not short, it's medium, it's not long. It's kind of in between, it's medium. And, and you get those, those orchid fruits, like a, a different array of orchid fruits, along with that, uh, like cake frosting flavor. It's... It's quite nice, really. I'm going to, since it's bottled at 40%, I'm going to do a couple of milliliters of water. As far as the grain component in this, it's there, obviously. I don't know the ratio of malt to grain, but it doesn't just slap you in the face. You don't have that fiery burn that a lot of grain rich whiskeys give you. Uh, it's melded and blended uh, probably rather slowly and obviously rather well. There is a touch of, of this cinnamony, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the black peppery, which you can um, initially think of that as the grain richness okay after adding the water and swilling it about a bit hmm now on the nose yeah it brings out it didn't before until I added the water but when I added the water it brought out a waft of smoke. There is a little smoke in the background there. The orchid fruits and the, the, the honey is more prominent after adding the water. lovely it's apples again very very it, it's a very syrupy and very thick type uh, whiskey it, it's got a lovely mouth feel and the sweetness and the malts and the, the 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 honey with the with the underlying aspect of citrus um, those light floral notes like the dandelion. I mean, it, it lends itself to a, a quite decent, uh, very simple uh, or affordable, I should say, 
<coughs> blended scotch whiskey. Now this bottle goes from anywhere to around 22 to 26 dollars, pounds, euros, wherever you happen to be at. And uh, it's a lot more complex than a lot of uh, blends. And it's one that I would recommend uh, simply because of the, 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 not only for the rich tapestry of flavors that it has, but the, uh, the fact that I don't think it's had a lot of chill filtering and I don't think there's any color added to that. I mean, that's a lovely color. Anyway, if I was to rank this out of a hundred, I would put this at a strong 86. Yep, I think it warrants that. If you haven't tried it, I would suggest you go out and buy a bottle because everybody needs to have tried Cutty Sark at least once. It's got a rich history, and I'll go into the history of Cutty Sark uh, a little later on when we start uh, reviewing some of the other expressions of Cutty Sark, uh, especially the Prohibition Edition, and uh, uh, there's another one coming up, which is an age statement version of this. Anyway, until next time, this is Tom. Have a nice day.